What we're going to be going over here is an installment sales contract with a default and a repossession. In for example here, let's just say this household plants was sold here by this uh, retail company here for $3,600 at a 30% markup of the selling price. And 20% was paid down or received here by the uh, company here, or the store here when they sold it to the uh, purchaser, purchaser of the appliance here. So, And then four of the 16 equal payments were received. So and then it was defaulted on on the future payments here and the pl plants was repossessed had a fair value at the repossession estimated at fourteen hundred dollars now what we're looking at here is we had sixteen uh, payments on this um, contract here and the purchaser actually paid four of the payments here but after the fourth payment they defaulted they didn't pay any more here and the uh, store of the company repossessed this of this appliance here. So first off let's go down and look at what we have to do here. We have to determine the gross profit on this contract here. So we start out with our sales price that we were given here at $3,600 and then the other thing we we're given is the markup, a 30% markup here. So to determine what I have to do is we have to determine the cost on this piece of equipment here or this appliance here. And the way I did that here is I just look at the gross profit here. That was the $3,600 sales price times the 30% markup on the, on the sales price here. So that's going to equal $1,080. So just working in reverse here to determine our cost here, we just take our sales price here, $3,600, subtract our gross profit from it, $1,080, and we're going to come up with a cost here of $2,520. So in this case, we weren't given the cost, so we had to calculate the cost. But had we been given the cost of this piece of equipment or this, um, this appliance here, then we would have just subtracted it here from the sales price the 3600 and we would have determined the gross profit here but we had to do it work it backwards here and then the other thing we have to do is we have to determine the gross profit rate and uh, we were given that here that was really a 30 percent markup here that would be our gross profit rate but looking at it in these terms here so it, had we not been given that here we would have say we have taken our gross profit here at 1080 divided by the sales price here 3600 and that'll give us a gross profit rate here of 30 percent. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is what we have to do is we have to determine the installment accounts receivable and the deter deferred gross profit balance at the repossession date. And then based on that we can determine any gain or loss on this contract here. So for step one, this is what we're going to do. We're going to determine our balances in our uh, installment accounts receivable here and the gross uh, deferred gross profit here. So s starting with uh, follow through these numbers here and use this this procedure here. So we start out with our selling price that was $3,600 here. Then the down payment there was 20% paid uh, a down payment here of the $3,600 uh, selling uh, $100 selling price that equals $720. So subtract that from our $3,600 selling price and our installment receivable here is actually $2,880. Now we received four payments of the uh, and there were 16 total payments here on the uh, contract here but we received four of those payments before the default. So uh, to determine our installment payments that were received here, that would just take four sixteenths of the installment receivable here of 2880. That's going to give us $720. So subtracting that from our receivable at 2880 here, the 720, our installment accounts receivable balance here at the default date or the repossession here is $2160. Now, uh, taking our gross profit rate here, that was 30% here. So 30% here of our installment uh, uh, accounts receivable balance here, 2160, is going to give us our deferred gross profit here of 640 so these are the balances that we have to deal with here at the repossession date here and um, repossession here and also the default here. So this is what we're going to be dealing with here. So now taking a uh, looking at step two here. So this is where we're going to determine any gain or loss on this repossession. So what we have to do is we have to start out with our balance in our accounts receivable. That's the uncollected selling price here. $2,160. We calculated that up here here at the repossession date and then we have to subtract the deferred gross profit that was that $648 so subtracting that here from $2160 we're going to come up with an unrecovered cost or book value of $1512 here okay and then we have to 
compare that to the estimated fair value here at, at when it was repossessed. And in this case, the estimated for, uh, fair value was $1,400. So uh, subtracting that from our book value, our unrecovered cost here of $1,512, we're going to get uh, $112. So you can see here, this is where we're going to have a loss here on the repossession. So uh, a fair value of $1,400, but our book value is $1,512. So the difference here is going to give us a loss of $112. So this is the when in the step two here, based on whatever your carrying amounts are and your accounts receivable here and your deferred gross profit, you have to determine if there's any gain or loss. And in this case, we had a loss here only because our estimated fair value here was less than our book value. But had our estimated fair value here been greater than our book value here, our unrecovered cost, then there would have been a gain. But we'll look at it here in terms of a loss. Okay, so now let's go up and let's look at how we'd record this here. And we're going to record this uh, repossession here, and this is using a fair value approach here. So what we're going to have to deal with, we're going to have a repossessed inventory account here for this merchandise that was repossessed here. And uh, we're going to record that here. Okay, well, let's just look at the accounts that we're going to deal with. We're going to have a repossessed inventory account here in the merchandise that was brought back in here or repossessed here by the company here. And then we're going to have our installment receivables. I'm showing as accounts receivable here. And then we're going to have a de deferred gross profit account here. And this is going to be a contra account to our accounts receivable. The deferred gross profit account reduces our installment accounts receivable here on our sales. And then the other thing we're going to deal with here is the loss here on this repossession. And I'm also showing a realized pro, uh, gross profit here. And that's only to show how we calculate how that was moved off our de deferred gross profit account here when we during prior to the um, repossession. Okay, so let's go start here. For a repossessed inventory account here for a merchandise, we would debit that here for $1,400. And we'll look We'll go down and we'll look where we got these numbers here. We calculated them previous here, previously here. So that's the rep that's the fair value here. So debit or increased our uh, inventory account, repossessed inventory account here for fourteen hundred dollars. And then moving over to our accounts receivable. Well, I'm showing our sales price originally here. So uh, and and based on that here, I'm reducing our accounts receivable by the down payment here of seven hundred twenty dollars, and also the four payments here of seven hundred twenty dollars that were received so what we're sitting with now at the balance after taking our reductions for a down payment here and the four payments received we have in our accounts receivable twenty one hundred and sixty dollars so that is what we're going to have to do we're going to have to write off our installment accounts receivable by the twenty one hundred and sixty dollars so we'll look at that here so in this case all we would do is we just credit it out here for twenty one hundred and sixty dollars okay now moving down toward deferred gross profit account here again remember that's a contra accounts receivable here so we started out with our sales here uh, based on our sales we had a deferred gross profit here of a thousand eighty dollars and then what we would have done here, we would have actually recognized $432 worth of, uh, reduced our deferred gross profit here by $432. And this is a previous to the uh, to the repossession here. And we would have recognized it or credited it here as a realized gross profit here on our income statement by $432. But I'm just showing you how we got down to our balance here of $648. So that's what we calculated here. Um, at the repossession date. So sitting at 648 here, uh, credit amount to our deferred gross profit account here. And what we would do here is we're going to remove this gross profit here uh, because of the repossession here off our off the balance sheet here. So we would have had credit at here 648. So now we just debit it out here for $648. So we removed the def our deferred gross profit. Okay, and then the other thing that we're going to have, we're going to have this loss here on our uh, repossession going against our income statement. So in this case, we would have debited that here for $112 here. That's the loss here. So let's just look at what how we got these numbers and then let's look at how we uh, uh, the debits and credits here. So our balance and our accounts receivable, that was our uncollected selling price here, $2,160. So that was sitting here at the repossession date here, $2,160 here. And then we our deferred gross profit that we had at 
$648 here. That comes off our calculations here that we previously calculated here, 648 And then the other thing we have, our estimated fair value of the repossession here at $1,400. So that was in our repossession inventory account up here at $1,400. And then going through our arithmetic here, our gain or our loss here on the repossession was a uh, $112. So that's where we, uh, how we got our loss here, debit that here for $112. So I've got them all numbered here. One, two, three, four. So you can refer back to our chart here. One was for the write off of our accounts, uh, installment receivable or accounts receivable. We had a debit balance here at repossession of 2160. So we would credit it out here. So that accounts receivable would have now a zero balance here at the repossession. And then uh, going down to a deferred gross profit account here, this is again, we have to remove our gross profit here off our balance sheet. So we had $648 uh, dollars sitting here in our deferred gro uh, and we would have uh, as a credit here, so we would have just debited it here for $648. So we got a zero balance here in our deferred gross profit for this installment sale that we have here now. And then the other two things we have here, and we'll go look at them, was that, that loss here. We're going to come up with a loss through our calculations, and we can look at it in our debit and credit balances as well here. So what, what we would have done here, uh, just increase our loss here in our income statement by $112. And then moving back to our repossessed inventory up here as an asset account, I'm, I'm classifying as inventory account because it's coming back in here at its fair value of $1,400. So uh, this is where the fair value comes into play here. Uh, item number three here. Okay, so everything is numbered here. You can go and you can refer back to it in our in our calculations that we've done here down below. Okay, and then the other thing here, if you look at your debit balance and your credit balance in these closeouts here, you're going to have a debit here to the fair value of $1,400. you are going to have a debit here to our deferred gross profit here of $648. And then we also have a debit here to our loss account here of $112. So if you total all those up here, you're going to come up with $2,160. So our debits here, a total amount here of $2,160 with our repossession account here and our deferred gross profit and our loss here balances with the credit here and our accounts receivable here of $2,160. Okay, so these are the, this is what you have to do here when you're dealing with this repossessions, the default here and a repossession on an installment sales contract. And just remember here, you have to set up your uh, inventory account here, title it repossessed inventory for the merchandise here again on our balance sheet here and I'm using the fair value here. You'd increase it for the fair value here and then your accounts receivable. You have to determine what's sitting in the accounts receivable here at the repossession date. So whatever that amount is you have to put it in here. Uh, have your accounts receivable at that amount here and then the same thing for your deferred gross profit. Now remember this is a contra account to our accounts receivable. It reduces our accounts receivable. You have to determine what the balance is here at the repossession date here. So and then for actually getting the uh, taking it off the books you have to write off your accounts receivable by whatever amount is sitting in your account here at the repossession date and then also you have to remove your gross profit off the books here at the repossession date here and then if there's any gain or loss based on the repossession based on the fair value here and um, your accounts receivable and your deferred uh, gross profit here uh, whatever balance uh, balances between your debits and your credits you're going to be looking at whatever a gain or a loss here in this case we had a loss and what I did here we can move down and look at our calculations just so you understand it here this gain or loss your balance in your accounts receivable that was your uncollected selling price here at the time of the um, repossession here and then you have to subtract out the gross profit that you had sitting in your account here at the time of Re, uh, repossession that's going to give you your book value here unrecovered cost through the book value here and then 
you have to come up with an estimated fair value of the property that are the equipment in this case or appliance that was repossessed here compare that to your book value here or your unrecovered cost and if any if the a fair value here is less than the unrecovered cost, then you're going to have a loss here. If the opposite was true, then you'd have a gain. Okay, so that'll take care of our discussion here when we're talking about this uh, uh, installment sales contract with a de default here and repossession.